What's up, Kyle's gang? All right, so I got one of my favorite poems. Uh, I'm pretty sure I saw this poem like on TikTok somewhere. And then I scrolled through my book and I was like, yo, this is the same problem I saw earlier. So I had to solve it, of course. So basically we got Batman and he's starting on a ledge and he swings down and then he hits uh, the bad guy. I don't know, I didn't really watch a lot of superhero movies, but he hits the bad guy and then he lets go of the string. So of course there's gonna be that change in momentum there. Uh, or I guess the momentum is gonna stay same, but you know, you have to do the change in momentum formula. And then uh, they're gonna slide across the floor and you're gonna wanna know how far are they gonna slide. So let's get started. So first of all, we want to find out how fast that total system here is going as soon as they collide and they start moving, right? So in order to do that, we need to find our, you know, change, or basically our formula. So we know the mass, or initial times velocity initial, is equal to mass final times velocity final. So we're going to be able to find the uh, mass is initial, we know our mass, and then we know our velocity final, or initial velocity, is going to be how fast this guy is going when he falls down. So we need to find how fast uh, Batman, basically, is going when he reaches this point. So we know that he falls five meters. Um, and basically, the reason, it's kind of like uh, confusing, but basically he's gonna go down that five meters. So he's gonna have that whole velocity, but when he strides, instead of having the velocity downward, the rope is gonna make that same velocity, but sideways. So we know that however much velocity he gains by falling five meters, he's gonna have that same velocity just going sideways. So how are we gonna figure that part out? But we know this formula. This is Google Chrome, because so this is like every part of physics that you've learned so far. So velocity final squared is equal to velocity initial squared plus two acceleration, or two acceleration times distance. So velocity initial is starting on all edge, zero. So that means that velocity final is equal to the square root of two times acceleration times distance. So velocity final is again two times gravity, nine, or acceleration is just gonna be gravity 9.81, and then this distance is five meters. So you're gonna get that his velocity. This is a different velocity final. I guess this is, should be, okay. Uh, keep in mind that this velocity is his velocity at this point, not the final velocity of the system. I guess it's just hard to label everything, right, you know? Uh, but this is 9.9, 9.9 meters a second. So that's how fast he's going when he runs into the bad guy. So now we have to go to this formula, right? So mass initial, uh, so let's do it. So left side, this is gonna be mass. I'm gonna label it Batman times velocity Batman. And then so plus the mass, I guess I'll, Robin, I think is his, who it is. I'll see Robin is equal to mass. Uh, so it's gonna be mass of Batman plus mass of Robin because they're gonna collide and they're gonna stick together. So their masses are gonna get added together times the actual velocity final. This is the important one that we want. So if you want just that, we're gonna divide over but let's look at the left side first. So mass of Batman, velocity of Batman. He's gonna have a mass and a velocity at this point, which we found. But then Robin has a mass, but he does not have a velocity because he's standing still. So we can take this to be a zero. So mass B, velocity B over mass B plus mass of R is equal to velocity final. So let's plug it in, see what we get. So mass is 80 times, um, I'm gonna make sure I have the right numbers for this, right? Uh, assassin, villain. Okay, so uh, his velocity is 9.9 .9 at that point, and then so it's gonna be 80 plus 70, because that's the mass. Bad guy plus mass good guy. So then you plug this in, and you get that the actual velocity final after they collide is 5.28 meters a second. So this is the actual velocity final. and But this is not done yet, right? Uh, it wants to know how far they collide and how far they slide after they do collide. So this is where we pull in the work energy formula. What is the work energy formula, right? I've done this many times on my channel, so I hope you've seen it by now, but basically it says that work non-conservative is equal to change in energy. So work non-conservative, that's your stuff like friction and air resistance. So in this case, we actually do have friction. Um, so that's gonna go on this side, right? So that's gonna be work of friction. And then our change in energy, right? Well, we're gonna have a uh, change in kinetic energy, right, of course. And I think that's all we're gonna have, right? Because there's no springs, there's no change in height, there's no gravity, like, you know, gravity, you know. So yeah, this is all our equation's gonna look like. So work of friction, of course, is force of friction times the distance that they go. And of course, there you go, there we have our distance, so that's nice. And change in kinetic energy is gonna be kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. Well, if they're gonna to come to rest, then you can kind of say that their kinetic energy final is gonna be zero, right? Because kinetic energy is equal to like one half mass velocity squared, so velocity is zero. 
there's gonna be no kinetic energy at that point. So then we're just left with the equation. Of course, the friction times distance is equal to negative k initial. So we're trying to find distance, so let's go ahead and divide over there. So negative k initial over force of friction. And we know that k initial is one half mass velocity squared. Or force of friction, which is gonna be uh, force normal times the coefficient of friction. And then of course you can expand force normal to get, and I'm gonna put the two on the bottom too. So it's gonna be two, so it's a mass velocity squared over two. So, my, my, so in this case, uh, if you drew a force body diagram, you'd see that force gravity is pushing down, force normal is pushing up, and they're gonna be equal to each other. So you can just kind of say it's gonna be uh, mass times gravity times coefficient of friction. So the mass is canceled, nice. Uh, the negatives are gonna cancel because there's gonna be a negative on the gravity, so you don't have to worry about that. So then all you're left with is velocity squared over two gravity coefficient of friction. And that's the total formula that they're gonna use. So if you plug in your numbers, uh, so velocity is uh, not that one, it's this number, so 5.28 squared over 2 times 9.81 is gravity, and our coefficient of friction is 0 0.25, and then you're going to get that distance is equal to 5.69 meters. So this is a pretty cool problem, right? We went through like everything you've learned in physics so far, just to get to the answer, right? We have our kinematics equations, we have conservation of momentum, we have a work energy theorem, very cool stuff. So uh, yeah, let's see solve this kind of problem. If you're having trouble with any of this, feel free to come back to my channel and uh, solve some more problems, because I got a lot of them, and uh, I'll keep making them. So thanks for the support, guys. I'll see you in the next video.